had a six-figure business in eight months, multiple six-figure business in 18 months, and was on track to make a half a million dollars for Wash. Casually, Casually that's that's how like we just, start. That's this. how I went out on tour of the Rolling Stones. Yeah, L.D. Drew, 100, 120 feet high. I'm up there in my harness. They're fucking human beings. The guy literally fell through a ceiling, landed on a concrete floor. I was like, all right, if you're able to make a positive change in your client's life, they will transfer that to their kids. They will transfer it to their kids, and you can have multi-generational change happen and a more positive experience happen in the world. I was 19 years old. I went out on tour the Rolling Stones on Steel Wheels tour. Did that for a little while. Just casually, casually that's how just, we start this. That's how we start. I mean, I mean, for, uh, let's go with a bang, let's right? Let's go, let's go. I actually was going to North Carolina School of the Art in their conservatory program. I couldn't afford the out-of-state uh, tuition. A buddy of mine who had been at the school too said, hey, I'm going out with the Stones. You want to go with me? I said, hell yeah. So I toured around the States for a little while. Got a little... um a little wild, as you can imagine, would happen on the Stones tour. And I just uh, kind of exited stage left and went and got a smaller tour and just went out with that for a while and, and, and toured. Hit about, um, I don't know, probably 40 states in two years, just kind of traveling around on tour. And I've just got, I just got Alaska left to hit right now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So were you just like following them, hanging out, watching shows? Were you working I on was at, for, for the Stones, I was, I was building the big stage. So it was a 100, 120 feet high. I'm up there in my harness throwing steel around, building the, building everything, getting the Mickevator set up so he could get up there for Sympathy for the Devil. So this was your first taste in kind of like the production world? It, was, it wasn't my first taste in the production world. It was my first taste going out on tour, but I was actually doing, sure. uh, started working at the local tour house in upstate New York when I was like 14, 15. Started by sweeping and mopping and then started helping out with shows that were coming through. D did some summer stock stuff and then just kind of- Kind of just, just worked your just way, worked up, my way up. Kept going. Nice. And kept so going. Yeah, yeah. Where'd that lead to? So that let me, I was out on tour in the middle, you know, walking through the desert at one point in time, literally just kind of got away from the hotel, getting some air, was not tripping on anything, just to be clear. <laughs> Stay away from drugs, kids. The, uh, <laughs> don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. <laughs> and I was literally, I was, I was just kicking around. Um, and I, I realized that if I didn't go back to, to college and finish up my college th this next year, I never would. And uh, so I, just, I applied to a whole bunch of different schools based on my experience I had. I got accepted to all of them. The only one that I could really afford to go to was New York State's version of, you know, uh, of School of the Arts. Went and got my Bachelor of Fine Arts. Did nothing with the theater degree that I had. Uh, but a buddy that I met at school was doing TV in New York. Went down to New York and just kind of worked my way up through uh, doing television production in New York. Wound up doing a lot of really big shows, a lot of the award shows. And then I became a gaffer with a, a specialty. And my niche was really uh, live music for television. So there's about probably eight years where if it was on TV and it was west of the, it was east of the Mississippi, I, I was probably there doing the show. Nice. Nice. So you're like an OG in the production world. It took me probably like three years to learn what a gaffer was yeah, yeah. when I started my company. Well, I would always say, I, I, <laughs> someone asked what I do, I'd be like, a big gaffer. Well, it's the thing that's in the credits that you never get to see at the end of the movie. Just yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. You're good. You're good. It pays, my, it pays my bills. Awesome. So humble beginnings, but then you kind of step more into the world of uh, entrepreneurship and leadership, I guess you would say, down the road. Yeah. Tell was, everyone a little bit yeah, about so that. Yeah, so I was, I was doing some really big shows in New York, and uh, production budgets were getting tighter, and it was getting a little bit less safe because they just weren't, the pro producers wanted to do less, wanted to do more in less time, and it reached a point where there just wasn't um, some safe, there were some safety issues to come up, and I was in charge. I was running 100-person crews, like 50 guys on the day shift, 50 guys on the night shift cycling people through and people are starting to get hurt and it just it, i didn't want that on my conscience anymore you know because like i don't want someone dying on my on my watch because i can't put my head on the pillow at night sure. and uh had an incident at, at an event where a guy literally fell through a ceiling landed on a concrete floor and got taken away in ambulance i was like all right well i'm gonna start figuring out what is next you know yeah. so kind of trans I, I started looking at um doing some uh, fitness training and that kind of thing it was actually i was in a theater downtown new york flipping through the binder for the H the asa trading manual kind of think about getting into coaching did that for a little bit and then i was like hey you know what i'm gonna i, I like this coaching idea maybe not all the uh all the physiology that has to go into actually being certified as a fitness trainer and so i, I got into coaching i started working with people i really liked helping people to, to improve their lives i thought that was a great thing decided it was time to to exit exit stage right this time, <laughs> if you will, from uh, from through the entertainment in industry. I worked on when the when the Pope came to bless uh, Ground Zero. That was I thought that was going to be my last gig, so I thought I was going to go out on the Pope. But then I needed some money a little bit later on, and I wound up, wound up going out on the Soul Train Awards. So you know, nice. still nice, not too bad, <laughs> still. And that's great. So you so you're running 150 per person crews for giant award shows, yeah. huge live performances where you're responsible. Yeah, yeah. You know, something happens. 
It's, Guess what? It's, it's it all my comes ass. back to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so how did you make the transition into what you're doing now? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I, I was uh, started doing some coaching, actually got into life purpose coaching because I really, I do believe it's really important for us to be in alignment with what what we're here to do on the planet. Sure. And I think that that was a great place to come from. The problem is I couldn't market that. I totally, I, could, I like, couldn't market it, couldn't sell it. There was one time where I literally was a, we were at a party out on a deck like this. We, someone asked us what, what, what I did. I said that and literally it was like, you know, every party's got a lull, but the lull happened right there and you literally heard cricket. So you, you couldn't make this shit off. And I was like, right, you know, I'm doing something wrong. So got myself into a whole bunch of debt doing that. Had a call with a coach. She literally said, you're a life purpose coach, not in your life purpose. Helped me realize that there were some different things that I could bring into it. Transitioned to business coaching, had seven clients within a couple of weeks, had a six-figure business in eight months, multiple six-figure business in 18 months, and was on track to make a half a million dollars before I got acquired. Nice. Then I spent 10 years working for that company and then got burned out with that and said, it's time to to jettison. And then I uh, came across this really cool course by content creators uh, and just kind of like started me thinking about, hey, I could meld these two worlds together. And actually help people make a lot of money doing what they love in their business. And I just was like, that, that's the, like the bell went off. I was like, all right, cool. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm assuming too, with your past experiences and making sure you were in alignment yeah, with yeah, totally. like your purpose and yeah. what you wanted to do. That's great to hear that, you know, you could find something that kind of meshed the two. So now you're, could you tell us a little bit about like what you're actually doing, who you're helping yeah, yeah. So launched Stark Media Productions, which is a content strategy business. And what I do is I work with um, work with my clients who are service-based business owners that are really trying to help other people improve their lives. Because again, I think that's really important to just not just create pretty videos because I've got all this production experience and I can make a pretty video, but that's not going to help them put food on the table. That's not going to help them get clients. That's not going to help them take care of their, their team and all the things they want to do in business. It's about creating videos that actually that actually work that actually bring leads in, that actually get them out there, get them seen by their ideal clients and actually make their life easier because they're not having to spend so many plates trying to figure out what the hell to do. So how do you think your past experience uh, in the production world is now helping your clients today? And not just in the production world, honestly, like production, coaching, like there's a lot of things that I feel like are coming together with what you're doing. Totally, yeah. So it's, it's a lot of like, I've literally been seeped in telling stories for the last 40 years you know yeah. it's like it's you know and I've, I've I've kind of experienced i used to work for viacom and mtv and vh1 back when we had 30 second attention spans now we got three second attention spans so it's how do you keep up with that pace how do you keep that rolling and being able to understand copy be able to understand how to actually use pain motivators and pleasure motivators to actually get your clients your, your prospects who are watching your content to actually take action Understanding the metric side of stuff so I can actually see where where your lead's coming from and how can we make that better? How can we how can we make little tweaks to what we're doing as far as our strategy that will exponentially increase the amount of people that are coming to you? How do you think your clients feel about you having those skills and being able to help them? I think they're pretty damn ecstatic, <laughs> you know, because it's it is one of those things where it's like it's 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 not like I'm out there you know, waving a flag saying, this is all the shit that I do. It's like, cause I really do come at it from an, a, a partnership place. Like I, my only interest is helping you succeed. Sure. And then being able to create a, uh, an asset, a video asset that actually that they can look at that and say, damn, you really captured me. I didn't even think about that about myself and be able to find that through line and that storyline that actually allows them to see themselves in a way they didn't even see themselves. Yeah. Right. And then more importantly, get push that out there and actually have, have people out in the world say, damn, I got to connect with them. I got to see what's going on. Do you find that there's a big difference if a client were to hire like simple videographer, their nephew who has an iPhone versus someone with previous giant production experience, business experience, CEO, entrepreneurial experience? How do you think that really differs at the end of the day? Well, the one thing I can promise you is that at the end of the day, you'll you'll have a video either way. They might both look good. One's going to be effective and it's got a strategy behind it and actually is has got is proven it's a proven formula or you or you're 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 literally taking a chance and if you want to take a chance take the chance but you're going to get lost and and god forbid that 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 cousin Timmy shoots something that's really bad or puts your brand in a bad light yeah. or drops the wrong 
word in there. And then all of a sudden you've got a PR nightmare. Sure. Because in your brand, ta- your brand is tarnished because they didn't understand all the different aspects that go into storytelling, marketing, and actually bringing clients in. How long did it take a brand to recover from something like that? Some brands never recover. It won't take you hours and it won't take you days. It'll take you months or years. And if you're a small business, you don't have that. Yeah. You know, and you certainly don't have that if you don't have a really solid marketing strategy and leads consistently coming in because you're, you're scraping by saying, hey, it's Friday, it's, it's Thursday. How am I going to get payroll tomorrow? Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's, it's kind of like what happened with Bud Light. You know, that's almost been a year Yep. of them trying to come back from one wrong kind of like marketing push and just still not seeing those results. So think about that, ladies and gentlemen, don't fuck up your business. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> cool, man. So are there any like um, projects you're most excited for or is there like a bucket list production you would love to do more than anything? I'm a little jealous of you because I, sh- I would love to shoot in Antarctica. I think that that would be epic. You know, it, it would just... Uh, <laughs> To, I'd love to travel. I've been traveling since I was, you know, five years old, probably. We like just got the travel bug. And there's something really cool about go, going and experiencing new places. I just would love to be able to travel and shoot and like really help people, not just not just in my local geography, but be able to get out there. Because I think the coolest thing to do and the thing that I think that so many people, especially in our country, miss out on is going out and experiencing other things. Sure. Because I think that if you can get out and you can experience other cultures, other other continents, other Different states. ways of life. Other yeah. ways of life. Hell, some people just other states. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you honestly. Know? But, but you go out and you see how other people are living and you realize we're not really all that different. One of my favorite places to visit is Africa. Like I love going to Africa and it's just, it's an incredibly magical place that, that you can't even describe to someone who hasn't been there. You know, it's it's literally between between just the, the I don't know, it's 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 where it all started, you know? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a powerful place. So Get to Africa if you haven't yet. You know? Yeah. And just like <laughs> when I did Kenya, meeting some of the yeah. tribes and yeah. just they have nothing, but they're the happiest people, people the friendliest the... people. They welcome you into their home. Oh, yeah. You know, it's four you, feet you, wide, yeah, you know. You, it's... you come into the village and they sing you in. Yeah. And it's it's like, you know, and it's, and it's not like, you know, nothing against Hawaii, but it's nothing like the Hilton, you know, yeah. not, you know, food. You know? <laughs> it is nothing like the Hilton. I promise it's you that. nothing like the Hilton. I promise Thankfully, you that. Thankfully, they didn't banish me. I had to go kill a lion and be let back in to the tribe because, yeah, they got some crazy traditions. They do. There. They do. Like, uh, they were telling me the stories, like, guys, they get circumcised at 15, and there's one knife that they've always used in the tribe for, like, centuries. It's old. It's rusty. It's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And if you flinch if you make a noise if you got a tear roll out your eye when yep. this happens you're in front of the whole tribe by the way when they do yeah. it you're banished and yep. you have to go out with just your spear and basically kill a lion before they <laughs> let you back into the tribe as a man so so, so, so thank god for, <laughs> for for the doctor at like zero years old you know <laughs> yeah thankfully thankfully my parents didn't make me do that they're just like get out of here go to college yeah, go, like, go, like, go, like go, leave go, us go, alone go, now finally <laughs> awesome so Want to get more into the travel world, do uh, some of those productions. Is there a certain type of business that you find that you can really help excel? But my favorite business to work with is is business owner who's created this business that they're aligned with, that they're actually, that they're excited about it. This is their, their, their passion, their love, and they want to get out and help people. I truly believe that the more people that are helping people, the better everything's going to be. And it's not just about you help me helping my clients to get more clients and help their clients. But if you're able to make an, a positive change in, in your client's life, then they take they will transfer that to their kids. They will transfer it to their kids. And you can have multi-generational change happen and a more positive experience happen in the world. And I think that that's one of those things that, that it, it's, it sounds cliche, but I think it's incredibly important. It's overlooked. And, and when we put profits first and we don't think about helping people, that's when you get into the sleazy, nasty stuff. And I'm not saying to not think about profits. I mean, let, let's be clear. You know, it is you gotta money. Earn. You got you, you got to earn. And the, yeah. and, and the more people you help, the more money you will make. If you're helping a ton of people, you are making a ton of money. And, yeah. if, you, and if you're not making a ton of money, you're doing it wrong. And so, you're not helping as many people as you could. So do you feel that uh, a business who's out to help people can still make a lot of money? Shit, yeah. Without guilt. Absolutely. And well, why though? Why? Well, no, right, so I, I think the only way that you can help a lot of people and make a lot of money is that you have to move past whatever internal guilt that you have. Because that's a mindset sure, thing. Sure. And and that's actually where you have made it saintly to not receive to to go out and do your work, your works in the world. But the the thing is is that 
you're designed to receive. And the more that you receive, the more you're going to be motivated, the, the more that you're going to tell the universe, yes, more of this, which is going to lead to more people that come to you. Yeah. And it's really is this, it's a reframe that needs to happen in, in the kind of the service-based helping space of like, you can legitimately make a lot of money, like a shit ton of money by helping a shit ton of people, yep. as long as you get out of your own damn way. And the other side is the more you make, the more you can reinvest into helping more people. Helping more people, <laughs> helping your team, helping yep. your family. 100%. Getting, getting out there, not, not killing yourself working 80 hours a week. Yeah. So you said one thing before. Oh, yeah. You said it uh, when you were explaining like the positive changes in the world. You yeah. said this might sound cliche. Yeah. How much of that do you think comes from the negative news BS that gets put out there? Because I feel like you yeah. and me both have a very yeah. positive outlook totally. on, on on everything. But you go online sometimes and you're just like, the world is blowing up and it's going to end in a week, well, you know? Well, traditional media, and this I'm going to preface this by saying this is one of the things I love about the media space that we can choose to be in today. We can choose where we get our content from. We can choose where we get our news from. We can go out and, God forbid, go explore and figure it out for ourselves. Not that anyone's going to do that. But traditional media gets paid by causing polarization, which gets you to keep your eyeballs on their channel and not on the other channel because the other channel is where they are. And you can't go see what they are saying because they're evil. No, they're fucking human beings just like you are. Yep. And it's, and, and there is, we are, and this is why you got to travel because we are so much closer together on literally everything yep. except for a handful of things and a handful of outliers. But those lead both major media because People want to pay, they pay attention to that. And if you don't believe me, walk, try to check out of your grocery store without seeing, you know, all those different magazines with all those salacious headlines, you know, that are trying to get your attention. Yeah. Cause that shit works. Yeah. It, 102 tips to yeah. improve your sex life. Exactly. <laughs> Ba-boom. I was like, I'll scoop that. <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> all right. So, um, so lots of businesses need content now, can yeah. benefit from content. The online atmosphere is virtually unlimited, totally. you know? Yep. So what do you think some of the biggest mistakes that companies nowadays are making when they're trying to get more into that digital world? Not posting. Number they're one. Just not doing it. They're just not doing it. Yeah. Because they're like, they don't know where to start. They're like, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to, I don't want to have anyone judge me. They already judging you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's already happening. Yeah. So why don't you go out and, and support, support your people, support your tribe, give your audience what they need. And I promise you, the haters will fall out. And if people are hating on you, that means that you're actually being seen. Yes, that's you know? true. I, I've learned this. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of the comments. Yeah, a lot of people drinking Henry out there. Uh, right? Keep it coming. I love it. It keeps me going. Um, so they're just not doing it. They don't doing, understand. They it, don't understand. Right? It, yeah, and, they don't. They don't know where to start. Yeah, they're they're they're. It's a hodgepodge of like just uh, throwing spaghetti at the wall to say this may or may not work. They're not tracking it. They can't replicate success. Well, what I see a lot of times too is they'll bring in someone young as their digital marketing manager because right. they know how to post on social media because because their thumbs work really right. fast, right? And they think that <laughs> they're they're there to build a seven figure yeah. marketing strategy for yep. them. Yep. And when the higher ups don't know what to do, and the person they bring in has no direction of what to do yep. and can't really take charge of that, it, you're you're bottlenecking yourself is how I see it. So a lot of times we even work with companies like a six month period just to get them up to speed, build their systems. Absolutely. And then they can bring people in. Yeah. But like, and I'm assuming that's kind of like part of what you were doing when you were doing coaching was just coming in to diagnose and be like, hold on, we got to build your foundation before the skyscraper takes off. Absolutely. And it's one of those things of it's, it's in the marketing space in the digital space in the business space, you, you have to get that foundation laid. Cause if you don't get that foundation laid, everything's going to, everything's going to fall apart. You're going to actually start to get success, but you're not going to be able to scale. Yeah. And there's, there's nothing worse than being at a place where you actually get a pop. You're actually, things are starting to roll and you can't scale. And then you lose that market share. You lose that opportunity or you try to keep up with it and you actually fail all of your clients. You fail your entire team and you close your doors. Yeah. Is, 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 he, is, yeah, yeah. is it, so I is it better it. To, <laughs> yeah. to, to be embarrassed maybe about a post or two on social and kind of like start to figure it out or yeah. is it better to go out of business? For me personally, <laughs> I would say that it's much better to be a little embarrassed and, mm -hmm. and push and push the stuff out there. And the, here's the thing you need to understand. And this is the, this is whether it's your, you know, I used to just say this about people sending emails to their list. Ain't nobody going to see your first couple of posts because you haven't been posted. So, so, so the machine learning doesn't know you exist. 
So you got you got this beautiful little bit of grace period yeah. to just kind of get stuff out there. But if you, the longer you wait, the longer it's going to take for anything to happen. Yep. So it's really about taking action, hire a strategist, hire someone to actually that understands it. If you can't do that right now, this second, pull your phone out, record yourself, say right. hi to your, your audience start. and just get, just start. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, so speaking of if someone wanted to hire strategists like yourself, yeah, yeah. all this incredible experience, how could they reach out? So they can, they can hit me up at starkmediaproductions.com. You know, not Tony Stark, Brian Stark, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah. the sweeter Stark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, so we're exactly, all exactly, on the same exactly. Page here. Yeah, so you can you can go there, uh, fill out a form. We can jump on a phone call or Zoom call and just kind of see where you're at and make sure that that I can support you and help you and it's a good fit. Because I only work with a, with a small amount of people, yeah. just a handful of clients. Because I I want to really support my I want to partner with and really support my people in having success. Go deep. Go deep. Gotta go deep. Come on now. Uh, Let's go. (laughs) Awesome. So, Brian, thank you so much for coming out, man, sharing some of your knowledge. Uh, I'm sure everyone there appreciates it. If you guys want to check out more, be sure to uh, visit his page, shoot him an email. Uh, Anything else you want to just add to the the creator that might be watching at home that's afraid to take that next step, quit their nine to five, start posting, whatever it is, Yeah. what what advice do you have for them? Kind of like what we just said earlier is is just start. Like it's one of those things that, that if you're if you feel the bug, if you feel the urge, if you feel like if you're just feeling a slight pull towards it, that that ain't gonna go away. So you could you could start today, or you could start in a month, or you could start in a year, or you could start in ten years, and you're just gonna be so far behind where you could be today if you just started. And just start small. It's the, you don't have to like change the damn world in one day. It it's is 1%. literally as easy as doing this, hitting record, and then going on social yep. and hitting posts. Exactly. As That's simple it. as that, guys. Don't hold yourself back. Get started. This man would not be where he is today without freaking dominating as he went, starting on lots of different projects. So, Brian, man, thanks again for coming by. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And we will catch you next time. Sounds good, man. Peace, y'all.